what I want to do now is I'm basically going to work on the ground wires. We look at our new plug here. We've got the ground screw on the bottom. We've got the white, the silver screws on the left hand side. See on the right hand side are gold. Now if you got it upside down, obviously it's back, it's upside down. But you want to look at the plug and usually you'll see somewhere on there where it says top or something. You don't really have to look at that. Normally the ground hole is facing at the bottom. Okay, so when you look at this, you know where it goes. So the long slot here, you see on a plug, here's the long slot. The long slot is on the left, and that's where the white wires go. And usually, if you if you forget about that, you look on the side, you got silver screws. The silver screws are for the white wires, and the gold screws on this side are for the black wires. The black, see how that line right there is a little bit shorter? That's the black side. You know, the black wires are over here, right there. The white wires on that side. And the ground wire goes on that orange, or the <laughs> orange, the green screw, okay? So as I look at that, when I situate the wires, I want my white wires situated over to the right. But and for right now, I want to concentrate on the ground wires. So I'm going to get I'm going to get the black and white wires up out of the way. And have this situated so that the ground wires are down at the bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to have to connect those two together. And I want these as straight as I can because they're all pushed in there from before. Okay. getting ready to connect the two ground wires because I only want one ground wire coming out here because there's only I only want one wire to attach to the ground screw over here I don't want to have to take both of these wires and how am I going to put both those wires on that screw can't here's your next step now there's two ways we can do this we got to connect these two together so if you got the splice caps right here and we can wrap this around and then slide a cap on there, crimp it, cut one over, fold it over and all that. Now, and that's what I'm going to do because I've got the splice caps, okay? If you don't have the splice caps, you can take a little piece of wire because you've got some extra wire now, right? And it's 12-2 because this was under a 20 amp circuit breaker. I'm going to cut a little piece of that off or this is what you could do and then you could attach uh, a pigtail on here, okay? So you'd have a pigtail coming out, you'd have a wire net over three wires, these two wires plus another wire, and you'd shove that in the box, you'd only have one wire coming out. Okay, that would be a pigtail, but we're not going to do that on here. We're going to use these splice caps. I've got these two copper wires, I'm going to attach it with the splice cap. Okay. I can just take this and wrap them around each other a little bit in the box. Take my pliers, whatever I got, and grab it back there and twist that. Now you know those two ground wires are connected together, right? And to ensure they're not going to go anywhere, take the splice cap, and here's the little cap right there. Okay? And I'm going to slide that on there. Put it back there, and I'm going to crimp that on. Okay, now I'm going to take the shortest ground wire, and I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to allow, I'm going to allow about a half inch or three-eighths of an inch there. Cut that off. Yep. Fold that up, and, okay. That's what I've got so far. Alright? Now I got a ground wire and I looked on the plug and the outlet and the green ground screw is at the bottom and then the white wires are going to be to the left and the black wires are going to be to the right. So I know this ground wire, I just take that and kind of reposition it back in there my pliers, get that down at the bottom, 
I'm going to resituate these wires. I got the whites coming over here and so that they're not overlapping the black wires. Okay. And I can situate them how I need to. Then I can push the blacks over here. Looks like that. Oh, that black wire needs to be swiveled over there like that. Okay. All right. So I don't have much room in here. See, these wires, normally the, wi the wires should stick out of a box about six inches or so. Okay, but we don't have that much room here, do we? We only have enough that we got. That's Okay, that looks pretty good. I might, I might cut the black wire off this bottom one just a little bit. I like to try to have them about the same length as the others. Cut that white, white one off. Okay, so that's how your box is going to look so far. You with me? Now there's two ways you can hook up this, this outlet. Okay, now on the back side, normally you can see some little holes back here. You could strip the wires and push them in to the back. I don't normally like to do that because sometimes those can get loose as you're pushing it, wedging it back into the wall and it's loose and you don't know it and um, you're going to have a problem with that. Okay, I always like to use the side screws here. Okay, so I'm going to have to strip these wires back and I got some wire strippers here and I'm going to strip this back about three quarters of an inch or so look at that and I want to make that enough because I got to have enough room for the curly cue and a little bit extra there. Okay. Slide that on. Make sure you got the associated hole there. I got 12 gauge. This is good for 18 gauge, 16, 14, 12, and 10. 10 is at the end. I've got the next one down. I know that's 12. I look at that and I see that the white one needs to be stripped a little bit further so I can do that. Look at the top ones and see those were the existing ones. Those look, those look pretty good. I think I might strip this top one back just a hair. Give it a little more length. I'm looking at that black one. I'm going to give that one just a hair. Okay. Okay. Now, we're just about ready to put this plug on. The plug. I keep calling it a plug. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, but there's one important thing we have to do. Do you remember what it is? Think about it. Remember this box here is a cut-in box. And I'm just going to tighten that up, by the way, and make sure it's tight. It is. I'm going to take these ears. I'm going to break. I'm going to snap these ears off. Okay. And then that's going to fit into this groove. There's a little bit of groove there. That way, when I put the cover plate on, this doesn't fit on the outside of that because the box already fits on the outside of the sheetrock. Now, and then if I put this on here, that sticks out even further. So when I put the cover plate on. The cover plate may stick off away from the wall just a little bit, okay? And these already have a little slit on there. You can take this, your pliers or something, and hold it on there and bend that back and forth. Okay, sometimes you have to score this a little bit more if you feel like you need to. Okay, but you can you should be able to see the little mark there just before the mark you want to hold it and just bend it back and forth and it comes right off okay see that that is going to fit in between there now see that's going to push the, the outlet closer to the wall you only have to do this on cut in boxes and that's why they have that the rest of the time this whole tab would fit right on the sheetrock wall it's kind of a cool feature plugs outlets have. Now these only cost like 68 cents at the store. 
Okay, the other thing I like to do is I like to make sure that these screws are out all the way. I don't have them out all the way. It makes it hard to get the curly cue underneath the screw. Okay, sometimes at the store they don't they don't think about that. I like to get those out a little bit extra, and it just makes it a little bit easier. I unscrewed that about a sixteenth of an inch further, and that's just enough to help me. Okay. Okay, this plug receptacle is just ready to accept these wires. This is all set up now for this cut-in box. Now because I'm going to attach these to the screws on the sides and everything, I've got to put the curly cues in. And on my cutters, my little wire strippers, there's little holes on there. See those holes? I'm going to put that in there and I like to turn everything up okay so I let it in there about an eighth to three sixteenths turn that up and slide that out well, that's that's pretty much what I want that to look like okay now I'm going to do that to all the wires And if you put if you do it too much, you can bend it back. You'll get you'll get good at it. Now some people they look at the they look at this and they say, oh, these wires have to be looped up and these have to be looped down for this. Well I don't do that on this because I got one more step I do before I put this one on. So I, I just roll these up on this side too. They're still gonna go on the screw, right? Okay, because when I hold this, I'm going to put the white side on first, and I'm going to do that exactly how I need to do so that the curly cue is going up still. Now, if I was left-handed or something, I would have those curled down and these curled up or something, okay? You follow? When you curl it, you want the curl going the same way as when you tighten that screw down. You curl the wrong way, then it has a natural tendency when you're trying to screw this on, tightening it, you're loosening it up against the wire. Does that make sense? Think about it. Okay, this one here looks like I went just a hair too far. I'm just going to make it a little bit different. Okay, well, that's, that's pretty much how that's going to look. You see those curly cues? There. It's like that. Let's put this cover or this outlet on now, shall we?